Hello everyone, welcome to Tactic Imperialis and to today's video. Today's going to be another quick little My Thoughts On. And today I wanted to do a hobby My Thoughts On. I did push fit and easy to build models the other week. And I thought today I'd do a very quick little video about conversion and kit bashing. Because it's a topic that, I'll be honest, is kind of near and dear to me. It's something I've done for years, but I've only really come to appreciate it quite recently because I've got a lot, lot better at it. So for those not familiar with the terminology, a kit bash is where you take a component from one kit and use it in place of a component from another kit. So for example, you might swap in from a tactical squad, uh, a sword weapon onto the arm of your devastator sergeant. I don't know. You take the hand from here, from this kit, put it into this kit, that is a kit bash, or as you might have also heard, it is a swap. Or well, that's how I refer to a kit bash. It's a head swap, it's an arm swap, a weapon swap. Um, that is what I would consider to be a kit bash. And those are things you can do very, very easily without much hobbying skill, experience. I don't know really what the word is without causing offence, but it's something you can do quite easily and without a master's degree in model manipulation. Conversion, on the other hand, is where you actually start to bust out your big guns. This is where you will do chopping, this is where you will be cutting up components and trying to make them fit onto kits that really they shouldn't belong on. Or you'll be taking parts off of kits that are not natural glue joints. So, for example, you might remove a model uh, at the torso where it's a full leg and torso model. You might remove an arm halfway down. You might change the head crest. You might uh, swap the head of a weapon or many other things. And I've got a couple of examples that I'm actually going to show you uh, of what I consider a conversion to be. So what I want to show you is a couple of conversions I've done from the Soul Wars kit. Uh, I bought Age of Sigma Soul Wars and I decided I don't really want to buy another box of these, or if I do buy another box of these, I'm going to have spares. So let's do some conversion work. So what I've got here is a Knight Vexilor conversion. It was a Sequitor Prime with a uh, great mace. But what I've done is I've removed this hand at the hand and attached a Liberator's Hammer, because a Knight Vexilor has a hammer. Uh, I've removed the mace at the head and attach a banner from the Knight Vexilor kit. And I've also changed the head from the Sequitor Prime to a Judicator Prime. This wasn't so necessary, I just wanted to get rid of the Anvil of Apotheosis symbol off of the helm. And though you probably can't see it on the camera, I've also scraped and filed off the Anvil from the Tabard um, tassels? I don't know what the word is. So I basically removed as much of the Sacrosanct iconography as I can and that's left me with this model. And I'm quite happy with it. It's not a, a great conversion, as in you know it's converted because the hand is a slight, slightly off kilter and there's a bit of a size jump between the haft of the hammer and the head of the banner, but it's a passable conversion and that is quite a basic one. Another one that is a bit more of a hybrid between a kit bash and a conversion is probably my favorite model in all of my Stormcast collection. This is my Knight Azeroth. Um, so this is was the Evocator Prime, again from Soul Wars, with two arm swaps, a head swap, and a set of Prosecutor wings stuck on the back. So it's a kit bash in that I have done a head swap, and it is some uh, kit piece attached on without doing any cutting, so conversion kit bash your choice. But it's a full conversion in that I had to chop off the hand at the elbow for both the sword arm, and I had to chop it at the arm and the hand for the lantern arm. I had to chop the arm to get the lantern arm on, and then I had to cut the hand segment away to stop it being held at a wonky angle, because the eyes were supposed to hold sort of like this. To get it held like that, I had to change the angle there. So that is a conversion. And as you can see, they create some really amazing custom models, things that no one else will own because you did it. So, as much as I've done a little bit of self-promotion, I, I know, I shouldn't really do that. What I wanted to talk about is why you should really consider attempting to do conversion. Maybe starting at Kitbash, basically 
why custom models are awesome. That is the subtitle for this video. Why doing your own custom models is awesome. One, experience. These are not my first conversions. I've been doing hobby now for 10 years and I've done a lot of conversion work in that time, whether that be simple kit bash head swaps, whether that be uh, chopping and changing different arms, whether that be replacing weapons, whatever it so happens to be, I've done a lot of conversion work in my time. And as a rule of thumb, I suck at conversion work. I, I suck. So this is something that you get better at as you go along, and it's something you can really track. It's kind of like painting. As you gain more uh, tool access, so you start buying files or hobby knives or drills, you'll start getting more used to working with them, and you'll create more workable and suitable conversions that look more dynamic, that do cooler stuff. And that's something you can really track as you go along. As I say, it's the same as painting. Secondly, flavour. I don't think I really need to explain this, but if you're a narrative person, someone who really likes the narrative of their army, likes to create custom characters, uh, build fluffy armies, or even just play lip service to the narrative in maybe creating one custom hero, conversion allows you to put your stamp on your army, do some really cool conversion. Let's say, for example, it's Age of Sigma. You want to use a relic from Malai Sorcery for your hero because it fits their backstory and where they come from. Well, you can go find a component like that from another kit. Maybe it's a kit you already own. Maybe you trade one off a friend or you go out and buy that kit specifically and you give them that special relic. So you go find a bone from the Skeletal Warriors kit that your mate happens to have and you put it so that it's carried in a reliquary on their back or they're carrying it in a chest or something like that. Or... Maybe their signature spell for a wizard is the Amber Spear. Well, why don't you get a really cool spear weapon and then green stuff, a fire effect on it, or that makes it look it's glowing with magical power and have them back here, like they're going to chuck it like a javelin of doom. Just as examples off the top of my head. Maybe your 40k character always uses a special relic weapon. Well, instead of just saying that plasma pistol is a relic plasma pistol, why don't you convert it? Add some purity seals, maybe add in um, some extra like flaming effects so that it's a superheated plasma. Maybe some burn marks when you paint it. Or maybe you drill it out to give it a more realistic pistol feel if it's a vault pistol. The opportunities are endless to add that little bit of extra stamp onto your army along with, as I've said, your paint scheme. This goes hand in hand with painting because it allows you to create a real narrative for your army. And you don't have to go mad. If you go back to my Stormcast Eternals army, the amount of models I converted in that army now, I think, is three. Uh, technically four, because I kit bashed my 19 Cantor with a new head, but I've converted a Lord of Kilo, though that was entirely a kit bash. I've converted my 19 Cantor, though that was a kit bash conversion head swap, but because it's push fit, I had to cut that head out. I've kit bashed my Knight Azeroth, and I've kit bashed that Knight Vexilor. That's it. And yet the army is, along with the paint scheme, the basing scheme, and the extra little bit of flavour I've added to the characters, that army is unmistakably mine. They are my models in my army. And that wouldn't be the case if I just, uh, I just pick the basic paint scheme and I never convert them, I just build them straight out of the box. Sure, build most of them out of the box because that's just the easy thing to do. But add that extra bit of flavour, it's so worthwhile. Whether it's for characters, regiments of renown, or anything else, I really cannot recommend conversion enough. And the other thing, the obvious thing, is rule of cool. Never mind narrative flavour, you might not be someone who caters to narrative. Never mind um, experience as a hobbyist, maybe that's not really your thing, you just want to get your models on the table as quickly as possible. Well, the rule of cool is a thing. If you're a competitive player, you go to tournaments, there are awards for best painted army and the like. And I don't know whether conversions factor into that and whether the army is customised in any way, but if I were a judge of the best looking army at an event, if it was customised at all, I'd take that into consideration. Obviously paint scheme comes first and the overall theme of the army is important, but if a few characters are customised and converted and kit bashed, I'm going to pay that dispensation in consideration. I think that's really, really cool. I love seeing custom models that 
give a new lease of life on a model I don't like. Like the Storm Surge, take the gun off its shoulder, put it in its hands, that's a really cool model. Celestine Prime, changes pose to the one in the Stormcast Battlestorm, it's in this month's White Dwarf, really awesome model, all of a sudden, well, better than it was. And I really can't stress the rule of cool enough, whether it's you want to show off to you and say, hey, look what I did, this is this guy, or whether you want to absolutely stress that WYSIWYG for your character in a tournament because your TO is a stickler for it, or you just want to be super thorough just in case, or you want to wow a judge at a competition. There is so much that you can get out of just the rule of cool for models. And that's, that's broadly it. And I suppose point four, as I've just mentioned, it adds a new twist to models that normally you might dislike. So you might not be a fan of X hero. Let's say, let's say Lady Olinda. Let's say you're not quite a fan of Lady Olinda because she's too small for a Mortark. Well, you can do some custom work to her, maybe add a longer flowing gown, have her coming out of the ground, do some basing conversion, because you can do that as well by doing basing terrain set pieces for your models, and that's a conversion in and of itself. You can really add an extra flavor to her and make her something really, really special. Or maybe it might be, as I come back to, the town storm search. Looks stupid with that gun on its shoulder. You do the conversion, which is, I'm sure, documented somewhere online, have it carrying that massive pulse driver cannon, or pulse blast cannon, I forget its name right now, and all of a sudden, boom, awesome looking model. And there are so many more examples. Put the town broadside rail rifles back on their shoulders because you don't like them carrying them, prefer them on their shoulders. Some people do. You can do that, and it adds that extra twist, that extra flavor, and that extra lease of life on models. So that's all I really wanted to say. It was a very, very brief video that struck me while I was working on those models that I just wanted to talk about conversion and kit bashing because I really caught the bug for it. And whilst Age of Sigmar is not as conducive to conversion, I really wanted to stress how cool it is when it's done. Not necessarily when it's done to golden demon standard because it doesn't have to be. Heck, I look at these and it's a bit of a botch in a few places. That hand is a bit of a botch. That banner's a bit of a botch. And if you're good with green stuff, you can patch over those, but sometimes you can't. But that doesn't matter, because if you do it just well enough that you can mask it with painting, or you can just fit in a teensy piece of green stuff that masks it over, it looks fine. Nobody's going to notice unless, well, they're a competition judge. So that's all I wanted to say. That is my thoughts on conversion, kit bash and custom models as a whole. I really cannot encourage you enough to go out, look at your favorite characters, your favorite models and say, what can I do to make them a little bit cooler? Excuse me. Or look at that model that you think, well, its rules are good, but I don't like the kit. Okay, let's change it up. Or this character that I've had for ages and ages and ages, where he's developed this real legend now, he's not an named character, but he always uses this relic and he's done this and he's done that. Well, here, let me convert you. Let me give you something that makes you really super special. So I really encourage you to do that. And I hope you do. And if you ever want to share those things, if you've been inspired by this video, then I have a Twitter page, I have a Facebook page. You can always just tweet them at me and say, this was, uh, I saw your conversion video and it inspired me to do this. Just do that. I always love seeing people's custom models. So do do that if you feel like it. The links are down at the bottom of the description if you are interested in doing that. Anyway, that is all I wanted to say for today. This is just a quick little video. And next time, well, we'll see. Um, if you have any suggestions for future my thoughts on, do let me know in the comments below because I'm always interested in taking suggestions. There's one video I've got my eye on, but I didn't really have time to get around to it this week. But I will get to that very soon. And I'm sure we'll have the AOS 2 Community Discussion Part 2 post-release edition. And we shall be talking about that very soon. But for now, though, thank you for watching Tactical Imperials Conversion, Kit Bash, and Custom Models. I'll see you all again. Bye for now.